What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you to another edition of the Movie Fam's Horror Review. I mean, who else am I going to be? None other than your host, the Movie Phantom. And, uh, you know, before we get started, I, I, you know, I know I'm more of a horror movie guy. But I feel like when something's bugging me, I, I should just go and talk about it. You know what? Fuck it. It's my show, so after I'm going to talk about it. Now, maybe this is just like that sign that maybe I'm getting a little bit older. When I will start a rant with, I remember back in my dime, or my time, my day, try to say day and time at the same time, it came out dime. Uh, that's another rant for another time, I guess. No, but I remember like back in the day, like they would have the 10 uh, items or less lines at the supermarket or at Walmart. Uh, what the fuck is this 20 items or less shit? That's like a cartload. Are you kidding me? No, I go to Walmart the other day. The fam's got to get some shit, you know. Some small shit. I got like some deodorant and a couple bottles of pop. Three fucking items. And like every line is just jam packed. And every fucking asshole has like a, you know, shopping cart that's full of shit. And you know, if you got the 10 items or less line going, you know, I can, I'm cool if like, you know, you got 12 items. I mean, I'm not going to be a dick. I've done that. You know, you got, you know, 11 items. I'm not going to go to another line. Fuck it. I'll go to the express lane. But these are like shirt, you know, or shopping cart loads. And no one's counting. They're like, ah, oh, fuck it. I got like 30 items. If they ain't going to check it, then, you know, Walmart's just too polite to say shit. So, you know, so as I'm walking through the fucking, you know, line, this woman, like, clear, like, you know, I, I'm clearly going that way. She can see I'm going this way. I got, you know, I have this, my pop right here, and like the deodorant kind of cupped right there. Like, I'm just doing this number. And she had her car full of shit and literally cuts me off to get, I'm like, really? What a cunt. I don't even drop the cunt bomb that often, but you know what? It tore me up a little bit. All I'm saying is, I think us as a people should rise up and say, you know what, fuck the 20 items or less line. That's not even express shopping right there. That is literally just, fuck it, you might as well just have a regular, you know, line at that point. 10 items or less, and that's it. That's all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. But I don't want to start us off on like a negative note. I, I want to apologize. It was just kind of eating me up right there. I thought I'd throw it out there. Uh, we do got a couple of good movies we're going to review tonight. Two of my personal favorites, actually. Boom! We got Carrie and The Omen. There it is. So we'll be hitting them later on tonight. So, uh, what do you say we we'll go ahead and just kickstart this bitch and bam, do it right, you know? Now, last week I asked uh, the question of the week, or I guess top three, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, what was the top th your top three uh, ghost slash haunted house, you know, movies? And I got one response, and I'm not going to you know, turn down that one response. Uh, I Mis mispronounced this dude's name, and he let me know about it, but he didn't like tell me how to pronounce his name. Like he just like said, "Yeah, you mispronounced it. It's all good." And he went on with his, you know, top three. So I don't know how to pronounce it. So it, like how I pronounced it last week was like Reels Joker, Joker's One Thousand. So bro, I'm gonna call you Joker. If you have any objection, you know, hey, hit, hit me up. Let me know. Like, eh, don't, don't call you that. But for right now, I'm just gonna call you, you know, Joker. If you're cool with that, so. Uh, yeah, he hit me up with his top three. Um, you know, really appreciate it. He didn't quite do like haunted house ghost, except for one of them. Really, I, I think he was going more for just like houses in general. And I'm still cool with that. I mean, I, I, that's cool. Whatever you know. Uh, he hit me up at number three. He said Saw Two, because it was like a house they were all you know stuck in. They had to like you know play the games in the house. Good movie by the way. At number two, 1408. Which, you know, another real good movie. I did a review for that, you know, a couple weeks back, so dug that. And then uh, number one was uh, The Evil Dead, and that was the cabin out there. So, once again, you know, one out of three was more of a haunted house ghost thing, but hey, whatever. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not complaining at all. Thank you for, you know, that right there. So, yes, uh, this week, I decided, you know, since we are doing The Omen, that I go ahead and throw out there, what is your top three? Uh, we'll say Satan slash demon because sometimes just the demons possess people and they're not really but you know they're creatures from hell so we're gonna say satan slash demon movies so watch your top three now i'm not gonna lie as i'm you know running through the memory warehouse trying to like you know find you know my top three to give you guys one kept popping up now i will not throw this in my top three because i will keep this horror movie related but i'm not gonna lie like tenacious d and the pick of destiny Kept coming up up here. Like, I'm just like, I keep thinking about Satan. I'm just thinking that a huge showdown they had at the end. And it was fucking awesome. But if we're staying in horror movies, you know, exclusively, I will 
throw it out of the way. Now, there were some good ones that I did, you know, jump past. I mean, uh, Rosemary's Baby, obviously a classic. Didn't quite make my top three. It was close. That was the one I got pushed out. I actually have my, you know, top three, but that got pushed out. I want you to know, though, it was, it's close. I mean, it's so fucking close, it's ridiculous, actually. But it did get edged out. Uh, I'm not big on the Exorcist series. Um, like I said, one, I said it was okay back... I was as the first episode I, think I did the Exorcist on, but anyways, yeah, I, I you know, I, it's okay. And even now, I'm just kind of, I'm being generous when I say okay. But I did like the Exorcist three. I thought it was a damn good solid movie, but it didn't quite make my top three. And uh, yeah, the last Exorcism found footage. I thought it was solid. I really did. So there were some that were close calls, but they didn't quite make it. Here are the top three, in my opinion, of my favorite, you know, Satan slash demon demonic possession, whatever you want to call it, movies. Uh, you know, at number three, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to throw a, this is one that, dude, I reviewed it not long ago. When I reviewed it, I was like, it's not bad, it's okay, it's worth a watch. But the more I think about it, I, just, I love this movie more and more. In fact, I'm ordering it online because I mean, I'm just like, this, this movie's that damn good. Uh, Angel Heart, yes, uh, dude, it, it's fucking awesome. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's fucking awesome. Like, the more I think about it, the more I love it. Angel Heart, boom, there it is. Uh, at number uh, two, I'm going to say The Exorcism of Emily Rose. That's just an all-around great movie. I mean, it, it takes like two, like, it takes like horror and like courtroom drama and puts them together beautifully. I mean, it, it has my girl Jennifer Carpenter in there, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of hers. So this was the first movie that I've recognized her in and fell in love right there. And then, you know, she went on to do, you know, bigger and better things. Uh, since then, uh, of course, I, I might be. I think this is the best thing she's done. But you know, in the uh, I guess the eye of most fans, they don't know her more from Dexter. I guess, but you know, whatever. And uh, number one, boom, Omen. I mean, come on, solid. You'll 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 basically hear me swinging on snuts later on. You know, so but yes. So that's what I want to know is what is your top three uh, satanic, devil worshipping demon, whatever you want to fucking call it. <laughs> Uh, movies. Uh, so, you know, there's several ways to get a hold of me. You can, you know, do the video response if you want. Uh, you can uh, just leave that comment right down there. Just. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll leave the comment right there. And then uh, you can, um, all my uh, Phantom friends over on Facebook, you can hit me up there. And uh, yeah, lastly, you can uh, hit me up at uh, moviephantom7 at gmail.com. So, multiple ways to drop it. Thank you, Joker, for your response. Boom. Let's go over to some horror movie news, shall we? Uh, not a whole lot going on this week either. We got, we got some, I guess, but, you know. Uh, I did see the trailer. There's a movie coming out called Million Dollar Crocodile. That's the title. Like, I kind of expect, like, Ted DiBiase to be on top of this thing, riding it through. I mean, you know, because I hear Million Dollar, I'm not going think of, you know, Ted DiBiase. Uh, but it's, it's a Chinese, it's like, I won't say, I don't, know, I don't know the history of, like, Chinese horror films or anything like that. But they're like hyped up, they're like, oh, this is like the, you know, I don't, I don't think it's the first Chinese horror film. Maybe it is. I don't know. I didn't do my research. I just saw the trailer and everything. But it is, you know, from China. And uh, you know what? It, it, it doesn't look like it's, I mean, it don't look bad. Like, I'll check it out because I just love, like, giant creature features. You know, the shit that you see, like, on Midnight on the Sci-Fi Channel. Like, I like that kind of stuff. It's horrible. I'll grant you that. But I do like those kind of movies. They're just fun to watch. This one has some of the worst CGI I have ever seen. Like, literally. Like, the only one I had, like, worse that I've seen recently would probably be the trailer to uh, Piranha Conda. That looked pretty shitty. But this looks really bad. But, you know, I'm in. You know, giant crocodile is tearing it up over in China. Yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, now, I did recently watch, and I'll get into this a little bit later on, but I did finally watch uh, The Woman in Black. And, uh, of course, you know, we've known for a while now that we're going to do a sequel. And I guess they just not got the title and the plot released there it's gonna be uh, the woman in black uh, angels of death that's the title and uh i guess like the plot is gonna be like the house the, the haunted house gets turned into a uh i don't know if it's i think it's a it's an insane asylum or like a mental hospital or something uh during the war and it isn't just a wish war it could be world war one maybe it's world war two i don't know they said the war but uh yes they use they turn into a, a psych hospital and you know Obviously, it's haunted, so we're going to you know, go there. But I'm just like, you know, will there be a children's ward? Like, that seems like that's you know, really the only way a sequel would work, but, you know, hey, who knows. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Now, there is a new uh, horror video game coming out. We kind of touch on video games every now and then. 
But this is not the one you would think. Like, you, I don't know if you're thinking I'm going to bust out like a new Resident Evil or Silent Hill. No, no, no. Uh, they just bust out a new uh, expansion pack for The Sims, and it is the Supernatural expansion pack. Now, I, I, I played the. Uh, I have not played it online. I hear that's the only way to really play The Sims is online. And this is what this is going to be an online expansion pack. I played the like, uh, PS2 version, and I, I always played it like in a horror movie style anyway, because what I would do is I would build my little house. And I'd make it very basic. Like, you can just tell there's a serial killer living there. That's the thing I was trying to give up there. And it's a tiny house. And I'd always, like, build it in the back of my property. And then i just have trees everywhere. Now, there's no cops on the game. Obviously, because of the shit I was doing, you know, there were police on the game. I've been busted. But anyway, I would, I'd would throw parties. And, like I said, I'd have these little tiny houses. But then I'd have, like, this. And then once again, you can't have the sliding bookcase on The Sims. So it looked pretty crude. I mean, people would constantly be walking back there and they're not supposed to. But I have like you know, this bookcase here and then the door be right here. Like, oh, sorry. Your, your guys' point of view. Bookcase be here and the door be right here. So, I mean, you know, if, if you walked around, you could clearly see the secret door. But whatever. And I would lure them back there. And I'd, I'd go into like one of the little rooms. And I have like windows like, inside the house. So I can look into the room. But I'd go into the rooms and I'd, like, I'd call them over. And I'd go over here, Jessica. And she'd walk over there. And then I'd, hurt and get, I'd, I'd get out and I'd pause it real quick and then like delete the door. And she's trapped in that little room. And of course the party goes on. Everybody starts getting tired and getting bored and go home. But she's stuck in this little room. And if you keep her there for like two or three days, she does eventually die. When a sim dies, as you guys know, she if they're indoor, they turn into an urn. Outside, they turn into a graveyard. So she turns into an urn. So I take the urn, I take it outside, turn into a graveyard. Turn into a little, uh, you know, plot. So I just started doing this. Like, a lot of like, this is awesome. Like, this is how I play games. I'm like, you know, the real game is just boring as shit. Like, you gotta go, it's like real life. You gotta go to work, and I'm like, fuck this. Like, I go to work in real life. I don't get to, like, slaughter, like, a whole, you know, neighborhood block ever. So, start, you know, killing all people. And then, like, if you get to the entire people, like, you know, you get everybody out, there's, like, no one left on the block. So I had to start creating people, moving them to the houses that were emptied, and then killing them as well. And uh, it was cool because like I had this awesome bitchin' cemetery out there. But the thing that I didn't know is like eventually the ghost will come back. And that is kind of surreal because my guy would get tired and I was like, oh, 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 oh. I'd lay down. And then like it goes through like, that fast motion. And I see something go Whoa, real quick. I'm like, what the fuck was that, you know? And I start freaking out a little bit. I'm like, what the hell is this? So then I start like, you know, holding the button to slow it down a little bit. And sure enough, dude, ghosts will fucking start walking around. I'm like, holy shit, I got a haunted house. Good stuff. But this game, apparently, like, they're already get this built into it to where, I guess, like, you can create your sims. You can make them uh, werewolves, vampires, zombies, witches. Uh, I don't know. Other stuff, I'm guessing. Uh, probably mad scientists in there. But it actually looked pretty fun. It actually had the sliding bookcase this time. So now if I want to kill people, it will look legit this time. So yeah, it's, you know, fun stuff. And I'm not going to lie, like, I, I may get into this because it actually seems like it would be right my alley. And then lastly, finally, uh, True Blood, which I have never had the pleasure to watch because, I'll be honest, Twilight has kind of ruined the vampire subgenre for me. And, you know, there's been some good ones since Twilight. Let me in. Uh, I, I like the Friday Night remake, but overall, uh, no, there really haven't a whole lot. Uh, True Blood just looks like another whiny fuck, and it's just like, I don't know, it, it reminds me of like Daybreaker, so that's why I'm just not going to watch True Blood, because I don't give a shit. Like, I don't want my vampires known at all. I like, keep them hidden in the shadows. I don't want them like, out like, oh, hey, we're vampires, and we're going, no, fuck that, it's retarded. Anyways, they got a new cast member joining Season 5. Mr. T-1000 himself, Robert Patrick, joining the cast, so, and I like Robert Patrick, but I just think True Blood looks horrible, so I will probably never check it out, so. I got a cousin, he'll, he'll check it out, and he'll tell me, you know, how the villain from the Marine is, you know, kicking ass over there on True Blood, so yeah, so there we go. Now, uh, this week coming up, we have uh, a movie opening, it's, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, yeah. I'm sorry. This 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 looks retarded as shit. Like I still don't like this. I I've, I've stated before. Like I you know it looks horrible. Sounds horrible. The more I look at the trailers and watch the different trailers coming out in the TV spot, it just looks like shit. It looks like pure fucking shit. Uh, premise is well, it's in the fucking title. It's uh, Abraham Lincoln killing vampires. That's it. That's the entire thing. Here's my problem with this movie: is it's taking itself way too fucking seriously. That's the problem. That's it. It sounds like an Adult Swim cartoon, and that would be awesome. 
You know, it's like, hey, it's you know, Abe Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. And like, if I was to do, it's like someone came to me, and like, you know, hey, Phantom, I want you to make a you know, write a story, you know, about Abraham Lincoln. He's a vampire hunter. Like, I'd have like John Wilkes Booth showing up and shit, and I don't know. I'd have like, yeah, uh, so I'd bring slaves in somehow. I don't know. Like, I would fucking do something and you know, make a comedy out of it. Whereas this one is just really fucking serious. He's just like, I'm Abe Lincoln. My mother was killed by a vampire, and now I hunt vampire. Really? It looks retarded. I'm sorry. It just, it looks horrible. I didn't like Wanted. It's from the director of Wanted. I don't give a shit. Uh, Tim Burton, like, he's kind of a draw for me, but that he's just producing it, I, I just, like, I don't give a shit now. Like, literally, like, Tim Burton directing is more of a draw than Tim Burton producing, so... Yeah, and I look forward to it. It looks horrible. And everybody's just like, well, Phantom, it's... Have you ever read the comic? Well, I don't read the comic. Is this what the movie is? Like, it just looks like the comic be shitty. And everybody's like, oh, no, Phantom, seriously. It's it's really well done. Well, guess why It looks horrible, so... Boom. Uh, yeah, so like I said earlier, I did watch uh, The Woman in Black over this past weekend. And you know what? I liked it. I will admit, I had some high expectations. And where it fails on my expectations was, I didn't think it was that scary. And here's the reason why I don't, you shouldn't ever try to build a horror movie up to be scary, ever. Like, I'm just saying it right now, I'll never be like, heard this movie scary. I'm like, no, because how many times have you actually been scared by a horror movie? It's, it's very, you know, limited on me. Like, I've, there's been a couple, but, uh, you know, it's a small list. Uh, I have a friend, and this dude's a big biker looking dude. Uh, he reminds me, like, how he looks. He looks almost like an uh, ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. Without the cross sides. Like, I told him this once, he got really shitty about it, and he's just like, I ain't cross side. I'm like, hey, easy. I'm not, you know, I'm talking about your stature. You're a big dude, you know, you're burly, and you're like a fucking biker looking dude. You look like you would beat up some nerds. I'm surprised he didn't beat me up, to be honest with you. But, anyways, I'm talking to him, and like, he's telling me like he was jumping during this movie. I'm like, holy shit, you was jumping during, you know, the woman in black? I was like, holy shit, you know? He tells me this after, like, he already did his theatrical release. So I was like, well, shit, I'll have to wait till it comes out. And I have some cousins that watch it and some other friends. And everybody, you know, universally said, like, it's a really good movie. And it's scary. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. Like, I'm finally going to see, like, you know, it's been a while since I saw a horror movie that really scared the shit out of me. So, you know, here I am. I'm in the lair. Lights are out. I'm, you know, what? and no, it, it, it was not scary. Uh, it was good. I'm glad to see, like, and I didn't realize the camera kind of came back. I knew, like, camera was, like, the, I don't know if it's the production company or just the, I don't know, distributor, whatever it was for letting me in. But I just, I wasn't thinking, like, it was Hammer. Like, I, don't know, I just felt like it was, like, an air company called Hammer. I didn't realize it was actually the, the Hammer, like, you know, Peter Cushion, Christopher Lee shit from the day, like, coming back. And so, and it, I guess when you think about that and you see, like, this, like, dark gothic house and the cemeteries and there's this fucking fog rolling in. I mean, it had, like, this dark, creepy look. But overall, yeah, it, it was not scary. But it was good. I do recommend it. I think you should check it out. And uh, I'll definitely check out the sequel when it comes out. So, yeah, that's my little mini review there for The Woman in Black. So, uh, and it had a decent ending. It was like a bittersweet ending, but I dug it. I was digging it. I had a friend that's like, I didn't like the ending at all. It was shit. And I was like, yeah, easy. You know? I, don't ever, I, I rarely judge a movie by its ending. Unless it has like a giant fucking spider that comes out of nowhere. Like the whole time the villain's is a giant spider. It was a giant fucking spider. That would that would tore me up a little bit. Like one black turns out to be a giant fucking spider. I would just be like, I, 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 no. That's my review. If, if it would have been a giant fucking spider, I'd be like, uh, no. So yes, that's that. So uh, yeah, uh, some viewer comments didn't have a whole lot going on uh, this week, but uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine, uh, Satan's uh, Slayer Lair. That's he has those those three S's. I think actually Slayers. It was with apostrophe S, but anyway, Satan Slayer's Lair. Uh, he was busting out his top uh, ten movies of the first decade of the 2000s. Like, I don't know what you call that decade. Like, it's not really, I don't know what you call that. Like, you know, you got the 90s, the 80s, the 70s. What do you call, like, the 2000 to 2009? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm asking you guys what you call that. I have no idea. But anyway, he was doing his top ten horror movies of that decade. And, uh, yeah, uh, decent list. I, I dug it. Uh, the one that he didn't throw on there, but he, he didn't see it at the time. He's uh, actually, I think he's gonna be watching soon. Uh, Frailty. Uh, that's one of those movies that I don't hear a whole lot about, and I think it's brilliant. It, it, if you want to see Matthew McConaughey actually act, I mean, literally, the best performance he's ever done. Now, I'm not saying the best movie. I, I got, I love my Days Confused. It's not a whole lot of acting he's doing in that though. He's just 
you know. Yeah. You could throw anybody in that role and it would have been awesome, you know. He could have, he, he could have threw Sean Penn. He could have done like Ficoli too and it would have been, you know, just as good. But anyways, what I'm saying is, you know, as far as him giving like a performance, dude, it's frailty. All there is to it. So, yeah, I'm talking about that. So, you know, hey, let me know if you do watch that. If you're out there listening, if you do check it out, let me know because I'm curious what you think about it. So, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Alicia hit me up with, uh, she agrees that Scream 4 sucked balls as well. She said it was bullshit. So, and I agree because Scream 4, so. If you uh, want to hit me up, you know, with a comment, you know what to do. Uh, you know, comment down below, Facebook, or, uh, moviefam7 at gmail.com. So, boom. We still get some reviews, shall we? Both these movies take place in 1976. I've read a book they talking about how, like, uh, really late 60s kind of changed the face of horror, but they said, like, you know, if you look back at, like, the history of horror movies, the 70s has, like, a lot of the best ones. And I gotta agree. I mean, literally, I would say the 80s has a few, but I've yet to actually do my own personal research and, like, break it down, and, but, you know... At least 1976 had two awesome ones because these were both 1976. So we're gonna start off with Carrie about the young girl who uh, has telekinesis, and uh, yeah, she has a uh, excellent prom night. We'll uh, talk about this now. Recently, me and Lynch uh, had a uh, we got to go actually see this on the big screen. It had a special viewing at this uh, cinema nearby, and uh, you know what? It was fucking awesome to see this movie on the big screen because it is one of my personal favorites. I watched this when I was really little. Now, you know, I, I mentioned before, like, you know, how, like, most kids, even if they don't watch horror movies, they know the horror movies already. Like, you know, you, you ask the average kid who Michael Myers is without ever seeing Halloween. He'll tell you who he is. He'll even tell you, like, oh, he's the one that kills you know, goes after his sister and everything else. Like, they know. I mean, they just know. Well, that's why it wasn't this one. Like, I don't know how I knew already that, like, Prom night, she goes fucking psychotic and you know kills people. But I did. But it came on one uh, night, late night, on a uh, Monster Vision, Joe Bob Briggs. I didn't even see the uncut or regular version. I saw a TV edited version. But uh, you know, I was a big fan of you know Monster Vision, and it came on, and I already knew what the big thing was. So I was like, hell yeah, let's watch this. And you know what? Even as a kid, and I'm still, I'm kind of shocked that I did, because really, it's like an hour. In 20 minutes of like nothing first. I mean, it literally is almost like a drama, like high school drama, kind of chick flickish romantic dramedy in a way until like the last, you know, half hour and when the siren goes crazy and everything like that. And it's actually not even that long, actually, because it actually kind of is a short movie. Yeah, it's only an hour and 38 minutes, so yeah. Like, the first hour is really nothing. And I don't mean nothing in the battle. I'm just saying, like, you know, if you're a hardcore horror fan, like, yeah, we're going to see some crazy, you know, gore and blood and kill. No, no, you don't get none of that. What you do get, however, is an excellent story. The, you know, like I said, the basic premise is, you know, she is a young girl who uh, is the outcast. And I think, like, you know, I, I can't speak for anybody else out there, but for me personally, yes, I was, you know, an outcast in school. And constantly... As I'm in school, I'm just like, you know, fuck Columbine. Like, I don't need a gun. But if I had telekinesis, dude, I'd be tearing this place up. That's all there is to it. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna try to apologize for that comment later on down the road either. Like, if I had telekinesis, dude, it would have been fucking awesome. Anyways, uh, yes, yeah, she, you know, she gets picked on. She gets dumped on by everybody. And uh, after one uh, thing, what happens is early on, she's in the shower, and she has her first menstruation. Now, she is, my gosh, she's like 16, 17 maybe? Like, she's... Maybe even older than that, like, she's, you know, she should have already had her, you know, first period already, flat out. But she gets her period for the first time, and it scares her. She has no idea because her mother is a psychotic Christian. And I went on my psychotic Christian rant back when we did uh, The Mist, but, yeah, I'll tell you right now, my favorite psychotic Christian is Carrie's mother, played by Piper Laurie. Anyways, uh, the kids, you know, make fun of her, and they're like, you know, this, you know, they're yelling, plug it up while throwing tampons at her. And, of course, the teacher finds out they all get in trouble. And, you know, it kind of it damages Carrie just a little bit more. Like, her life's already shit, but now that just adds more shit onto the, you know, big pile of shit that it is, it is her life. So, anyways, you know, one of the girls that's in the group, you know, Sue, she decides, like, you know what, let's, you know, try to be nice. She has her boyfriend played by, Tom, you know, who's uh, Tommy Ross, played by William Cat. Dude, I love this dude. Like, this guy, how did he not become bigger than, you know, this is, like, the only thing I know he did. Like, he did a lot of TV work after this. I'm like, this dude, like, he looks like he should be, like, the lead singer for Led Zeppelin. The guy just oozes coolness. Come on, really? Uh, I was ashamed that, you know, he didn't really go on to do much more after this. But anyways, you know, she gets him to, you know, take her to prom. And, of course, you know, he takes, you know, and the thing is, like, it is a very sweet, touching, you know, you, when you watch it kind of grow from that. Because, once again, she's very shy. 
she's, you know, just kind of, you know, in her own little world per se. When, when this guy comes, you know, to ask her out, you know, she's scared. She's kind of untrusting because she knows, like, you know, could this be another joke or another prank? And no, takes her to prom. And of course, you know, dude, she looks lovely. And it is like one of the sweetest moments. Like whenever they're dancing, dude. And of course, this is really, you know, it's all, you know, credited to Sissy Spacek's acting because she, you know, you she conveys every emotion when she's acting. I mean, she went from being like this, you know, shy, scared little girl early on. And then you can see like true happiness, you know, kind of shine through, you know. And, you know, it really is just, you know, great. But the thing is, on the other side, we have, uh, oh, I can't think of her name right now. I can't think of, or Chris is her character name. I don't know where her real name is. Uh, I can't find it. Anyways, uh, you know, she's just the, no, wait, Chris was, Chris, you know, I don't know. The bitch. I'll just say the bitch. I can't, I, I'm pretty sure her name was Chris. Anyways, uh, yeah, she's going to pull the ultimate prank. And her boyfriend, played by John Travolta, which I'm not there right now, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is the first see John Travolta in the car, and he just had that John Travolta smile. Dude, I'm just like, this is awesome. Like, he's a dick in this movie, but dude, I don't know. Love the guy. Anyways, yeah, uh, gets him to basically him and his retarded redneck friends kill a pig, get the you know pig's blood in a bucket, and they set it on top of the stage, and then they rig it so that, you know, she and uh, Tommy Ross win the homecoming king, king and queen. And then, of course, Pulls it right there, and then all hell breaks loose. Uh, you know, another thing great about this movie is the directing by Brian De Palma. Now, he does it. Not, not that really, I guess it's his pacing in this that I really dig more than anything. Because it really is, like I said, it's a short movie, but it, it crams a lot in there, and not really in a bad way. I mean, it flows perfectly. Uh, you know, one of my favorite scenes is uh, when they're picking up the ballots, and it's it stays right there. All, at first, like you know, they hand it off. They hand the ballots all, and the camera kind of follows the ballots, and it's PJ Souls and this other dude, and they're, you know, walking in everybody's ballots, and then when it hits them underneath the stage, you follow this, uh, and by them underneath the stage, I'm talking about Chris and uh, John Travolta played by, uh, or sorry, John Travolta playing Billy Nolan, and of course you see them holding the cord, and of course the cord, you know, the camera, all, all one take, mind you, all one take, you know, follows the cord up to the bucket of blood, and then it comes right back down as they're announcing that the winners are, in fact, Carrie and uh, Carrie White and uh, Tommy Ross. Boom. And I, it's one of my favorite shots in the whole movie. I think it's just a brilliant, you know, that's more like the film geek part of me coming out right there. Uh, when they're dancing, I love that because when they're dancing, uh, when they did it, they did like on a giant turntable thing. And they had the tracks and, of course, the turntable's spinning one way and the camera's going the other way. And it starts off very slow. Once again, it's a very sweet scene because now it's like it's like what Carrie's been wanting her entire life. She's finally on the inside, you know. It's like the ugly duckling, you know, turned into a beautiful swan. And, of course, as it, the dance progresses, it's getting crazy out of control. It's just whirling around. And some people say, like, you know, they feel like that was kind of like uh, the fact that it is... Oh my God, the, the lair. Once again, dude, the... Uh, Next to a cemetery, and the zombies do get out sometimes. Anyways, back to what I'm saying is, you know, I heard some people say, like, you know, when they see this, they kind of feel like, you know, it's almost like her world is spinning out of control at this point, and it's almost like telling you what's going to happen later on. Whereas I kind of see it like she's being lost. Like, this is like, you know, it's almost like everything else is dreamlike around her, and it's almost like, you know, in a dream, everything's kind of hazy and fat, and then, you know, you're just kind of there in that moment. And that's how I look at this scene. Like, almost like you're just kind of at, at this one moment while everything else around you is going. Like, she doesn't care about what's going on around her. It's right there. But that's just my interpretation. I mean, it's, you know, once again, they kind of already said that's not what they're talking about in the movie on the special features. But whatever. It's just film is art, and you can interpret it however you want. But the one thing that we all look forward to is the end. Sure enough, last half hour of the movie. Maybe not even that. Probably the last 20 minutes, something like that. When they drop the pig's blood on her, and dude, yeah, that's when it just goes, because then you like, you know, when she starts snapping, once again, her acting, because she goes from like being devastated, and I'm not going to lie, like, I just probably cry up on stage, I'd be like, oh my god, yeah, because I don't have carry power, I just cry, crap my pants, and then run off, but you know, then she just kind of like, she does this thing, I mean, she looks almost like an alien in a way, she just like, her eyes are bulging, and she just comes around like this, and boom, and that's when we uh, get the red tint, and I love that little angle, I mean, the color that, you know, De Palma uses in this scene alone, just red tint, and then we do the famous uh, De Palma split screen, and we see the door shutting, and now everybody is fucked, and, you know, and all honestly, when you look at it, like, now, it's really, like, the only thing that really causes the chaos is really just a water hose, 
Like, she just hits everybody at the door, slams on people, water hose hitting people, spraying people in the face, but then it causes electrical fire and everything. And the only other thing she does that really, like, messes it up is she, uh, the basketball goal. She hits that, it comes down, and it hits the teacher that is actually on her side. See, at this point, she doesn't fucking care because Carrie's just like, you know what? Enough's enough, and everybody's gonna pay now. I love it. And, of course, she does. She takes everybody out there, the teacher. And I, I love that scene. That's one of my favorite lines, too, is like, they're all going to laugh at you. I love that right there, dude. That is just one of the best things ever. When it's all going in her mind and, like, all these different quotes are going through her mind, dude, it's, it's go time. And, yeah, she fucks them all up. Uh, yes. And then, of course, she gets home. Mom goes crazy. And she, uh, yeah. Mom tries to kill her. And when she comes out for that final time, because she stabs her once, but then when she goes for that second stab, uh, she, uh, in her mind, hits knives, and all the knives <laughs> stick her up. And what's interesting about that is, and this is something you probably already know, because this is, once again, this is a movie that you guys should have already seen. But, you know, early on when she gets thrown in her prayer closet, uh, there's a Jesus, one of the craziest Jesus I've ever seen. If I can ever find a Jesus like that, I'll definitely buy it. But the Jesus, he's crucified, but he's crucified like this. Not like this, but like this. And, of course, his eyes are wide open. He's been stabbed all over. Well, whenever... Carrie's mom gets hit, it's kind of the same thing. You kind of see here, same pose, knives all in her. So, yes, and uh, once again, one of the best movies ever. I mean, definitely five stars out of four. I mean, that's how much I love this movie. This movie is just brilliant. Uh, and once again, I mean, I've, you know, I've been kind of blowing, you know, Piper Laurie, Sissy Spacek, Brian De Palma, but, you know, let's face it, it was from Stephen King's novel. Now, granted... There are some differences. I mean, when you read the novel, and, I, and Stephen King has said this himself, and a lot of people have said this, the movie is definitely way better than the novel. I mean, even Stephen King's first admit days, it's like, yeah, I didn't really, you know, I didn't like my ending. I'm glad he did something different. And, you know, he comes through on this. I mean, it definitely is just, you know, a damn good, damn good movie. Uh, of course, the ending. And it's great because when I watched it, honestly, this has been out since 76. You know, I've seen it a million times. Now, the first time I saw it, yeah, I did have that initial jump at the end. There is a scene at the end. You know, you know at this point, you know, it's 76, you should have already seen it, but there's a scene where she's going toward, uh, she's having a dream and she's walking toward, uh, basically it's the rubble of the house, because after Carrie, you know, kills her mom, she's just devastated, and then she, her, you know, telekinesis goes crazy, the house starts collapsing on itself, and it kills her, and, well, her mom's already dead, but, you know, that what takes her down. Well, in the dream, she, you know, uh, yeah, I think it's Sue, I can't remember, I'm sorry, I, just, I literally just watched this a couple days ago, my mind just, anyway, she, uh, was walking up to the, you know, debris, and of course, as she's laying the flowers down, Carrie's bloody hand comes up, grabs her, and everything like that, and, you know, really, there's not, like, a big, loud, you know, burn or anything like that, it's literally just the hand comes up, and then it's just her screaming, but when we was at the theater, everybody, and once again, this has been out forever, and I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, it's 1976, and, you know, you really only went to the theater to watch Carrie if you've already seen it, or a fan of it, we're in the theater, dude, everybody jumps, it's, it's like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, Lynch jumped. I'm just saying, Lynch jumped. I'm, you know, he's gonna get shitty about that probably, but whatever. He jumped. Yeah, uh, damn good movie. I can go on and on about this, but I don't want to bore you with something you a, already know. So yes, check it out. Definitely recommend it. It was followed by a, a sequel, uh, The Rage Carry Two. That was a little more of a remake. I ain't gonna lie. Like it was just said a few years later. I want to say like it even brings over one of the characters, but. At the end of the day, it, it, it was basically some retelling of the first story. Uh, they had a TV movie remake, which I have not seen. I don't know if it was like a TV movie or a miniseries. Either way, I uh, didn't hear a whole lot of good things about it. And, of course, you know, there is a remake coming out. So, that's what I want to see. I do want to see the remake, but I probably won't even touch that at all. All right, coming up, we got The Omen. Now, I'll tell you right now, just before I start off, I mean, this is about, you know, in a nutshell, a uh, U.S. ambassador from finds out that his son may potentially be the Antichrist. I am such a fan of this movie that I actually have a tattoo of the Mark of the Beast on my head. Now, I won't show you, A, because my hair is really dark right now. It is kind of cut short at the moment. However, I don't think you'll be able to see it anyways. And, you know, the Phantom's got to keep shit under wraps. But, yes, I love this movie. And this is another one just it's just it's just perfect. I mean, directing, acting, everything. And I, you know, the thing is like you know, once again you you've seen this. I know you had this in. There's no way you have not seen this. And if you haven't, fucking you go out and rent these two tonight. Rent them. Do you still rent movies or do you just download it legally? I don't give a shit. Either one you gotta do, do it. But the one thing I noticed about this one, I was watching, uh, the, you know, I watched this last night actually. You know, it's little Damien. I actually felt sorry for him for a minute. I'm not gonna lie. I know it sounds weird, but. 
The scene where they're at the zoo, and he gets out of the car, and he sees the giraffe. Because you remember, yes, he is the son of Satan. He is the Antichrist. But it's like, no, he's still a little boy. He's still a little boy. He just wants to see the giraffes. And the giraffes look at him, and then they run off. And it looks like the little Damon's about to cry. And I actually felt sorry. I was like, oh, my God, like, poor kid. Let's go see the monkeys. Maybe the monkeys will make him feel better. And we know how that goes, because the monkeys go ape shit and try to destroy the car. Uh, yes, uh, once again, this is another one of those that, you know, I feel like if I, anything I say, you'll just be bored with it, because once again, you've seen this already. Actually, I went too long on this one, I feel. I feel like, you know, this, everything I said on this one, you, you know, already know. Uh, but yes, just another solid fucking movie. Uh, the acting is incredible. Uh, even the camera, like when she, uh, there's a scene where, uh, Lee, I'll finish trying to her last name, uh, Remick, Lee Remick, uh, supposed to be Damien's mother. Stepmother, foster mother, you're gonna call her because she, you know, Damien's not really the boy. Anyways, the scene where she falls off the top, you know, of the floor, the top floor, second floor, and she's hanging on there and she falls. And once again, when you see it, like, I've heard some younger people are like, that looks fake. I think it looks incredible. Like, I love, like, even though you know that she, hey, she's not really falling, if you see the special features, you know, they show you how they did that scene. I think it looks surreal. I think, for as far as movies go, I think it looks incredible. It's almost like the dude falling. Down the steps and Psycho. I guess he's doing this. It looks kind of off at the same time. It, it, it becomes like one of those just powerful fucking scenes, you know, in you know cinema history. Dude, there's a zombie attack going on out there right now. It, it's insane. It is insane. Uh, we hear about the zombie dude from Miami, Florida that was like eating somebody. Well, it's happening out here too. Uh, so anyways, yes, uh, The Omen. Uh, just brilliant. And this is actually one of the first movies... Uh, I watched uh, Final Destination 3 the other day. I've seen it before a million times, but you know, I, I enjoy Part 3. It's not bad. But uh, I noticed you know, they, they definitely took the camera thing from here because in this one, uh, David Warner plays a, a photographer who snapping all these shots of these different people. Every time someone dies, you know, it has like, you know, like the nanny. took a picture of nanny and you see like the rope kind of, a shadow of the rope hanging around her neck where she hangs herself. It also has one of the best scenes of all, or one of the best quotes of all time too. The... Uh, you know, look at me, Damien. It's all for you. And then she just jumps off. Dude, that, that's awesome. In fact, if I, if I am to ever kill myself, it's definitely going to be like a kid's birthday party. And I'm going to hang myself in front of all the kids and hopefully traumatize each and every one of them. Except for the Antichrist, because that's who I'm doing it for. But anyways, yes, uh, you know, they show like uh, the priest gets impaled by the giant, you know, lightning rod. And of course, that's in the pictures as well. And there's, in the say, like, you know, Final Destination 3 definitely got it from this. There's been a few other movies I've seen since then that has used that as well. I can't name them right now, but yeah, there's been a couple of views, you know, since then. But yes, overall, two damn good movies. I definitely recommend it. This one actually uh, spawned three sequels. I think the fourth one may have been a TV movie, but don't quote me on that. And then, of course, they had a remake, which I have still yet to see the remake, so I'm just like, this is perfection. I don't really like Julia Stiles. Lee Shriver, or Liv Shriver, or whatever you pronounce his name. He's not bad, but I'm just like, eh. You don't mess with this. You just don't, you can't touch it. And apparently it didn't, because it didn't spawn any, you know, shitty sequels, so whatever. So yes, boom, there it is. The Omen, Carrie. Check him out. That's all there is to it, so. All right, you know what? I'm going to head out of here. Got to make sure I defend the fort against this uh, zombie apocalypse going on outside. So boom, catch you guys later. Check you later.